Studio Q Queen Student Television Program is brought to you in part by Procter & Gamble, continuing a long tradition of hiring Queen students. And by Kingston Area McDonald's Restaurants. You can enjoy all your McDonald's favorites by calling 1-800-663-2233 for McDonald's delivery in Kingston. All you have to do is call and let McDonald's do the rest. Welcome to the final last episode of Studio Q. I'm Graham Abbey. And I'm Paige Lawrence. And we have a couple special surprises today. First of all, it's sunny here in Kingston, which is a surprise to begin with. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have our executive producer, Michael Wise, here with us Hi, uh, today. He's sort of overlooking things, uh, it being the last show and all. And thirdly, Tasha decided to dye her hair uh, for today. Isn't that nice? Isn't she a riot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I can't even think of anything to come up with. So no, you can't. Mm -hmm. To start things off, we have, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be looking at the year in review as formal. One of the best things about working for Studio Q is that sometimes you get assigned to cover a formal, which means that you and your camera person get A, into the formal free, and B, you get wide access to the bar, which uh, makes all you want. for interesting coverage of the event. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a special look at the big, three biggest parties of the year, the engineering formal, the commerce formal, and the arts formal. If you're one of the fortunate ones, Grant Hall was the place to be last Saturday, as members of Psi 94 and other lucky invites celebrated in style. Mom and Morgenthaler got everyone up and moving. Not that there was any lack of enthusiasm around. Formal obviously means a lot to these crazy plumbers. For Studio Q, I'm Jen Mondu reporting. Arriving at the Portsmouth, security was tight at the door as tickets were scanned by the constables. Once inside, though, formal goers let loose. The dance floor rocked, and the formal staff was kept incredibly busy all night. If the sounds on this dance floor were too much, students could venture into any number of theme rooms. Ye old Alfie's was very popular playing the sounds of the Mahones. And many students also went to enjoy the special talents of the formal photographer. Okay, so that's three, two, one. Thanks very much, you two. Upstairs, formal goers danced to jazz and blues tunes. The elegance by twilight theme was everywhere in painted English gardens, topiaries, and special storefronts built to display Victorian fashion. Our camera plowed through the crowds, getting some commentary on the way. I miss you so much next year. I don't want to see why I'll cry. Come down in about five minutes. You'll see, you'll see the aftermath. 
Moving along, there was one couple in particular who just loved our cameras. Yeah, you know, if I was to light a match, what would happen to this place? I don't know. Besides the usual formal excitement, Arts 94 received a special visit from the Kingston Fire Department. Midway through the evening, a fire alarm sounded and students were forced to evacuate the building. The Kingston Fire Department arrived quickly, but no fire was discovered. Even with the tight security at this year's Arts Formal, the cause of the fire alarm is still unknown. Perhaps it was just the sheer heat and intensity that brought even the Kingston Fire Department down to check things out. For Studio Q, I'm Stephanie Wilson reporting. The festivities began with an open bar reception at the faculty club. Everyone was excited about the evening to come. Studio Q asked people for their predictions for the evening. Uh, I have many expectations. Are you going to be going bowling later? The bowling may be on the agenda. We'll, we'll see how the formal goes. Big, huge, just a massive evening. Everyone's going to have a really good time. Like Everyone's here, but now they're just dressed up and loaded. It's time. Let's go in and check out, see what's going on at Commerce Formal 94. Come on, Victor. <laughs> well, everyone's having a good time, it seems. But we'll let you decide. Y'all ready for this? of dancing, laughing, and having a good time, it's obvious to see that our night of revelry has finally come to an end. Commerce 94 Formal is finally finished, but has it? It seems that the crazy times just didn't stop for these Commerce 94 Formal goers. I wonder how they felt on Sunday. Well, Phil Snyder, Commerce 94 class president and formal committee member, definitely had his own unique experience. This is our housemate, Phil Snyder. He came home from the Commerce Formal last night. He had been drinking all night. At 10 30 this morning, he came to the house, could not even open the door. He was so drunk. Stumbled around the house for about five, ten minutes, maybe half an hour. <laughs> then we decided that we were going to place him out here on the street. It seems as though Phil was able to protect his evening quite well. I'm going to be hosed. We're all going to be hosed. Everyone will be hosed. I'm already hosed. <laughs> For Studio Q, this is Kathy White reporting. Hi, this is Kathy White once again with a special thank you for all the bars and pubs who took part of What's On Where this year. Alfie's, Dr. Gertie's, The Quiet Pub, The Shot, and The Toucan. Keep them in mind when you go out to celebrate the end of exams. Studio Q and What's On Where hope you have a great summer and see you in September. One of the most successful segments on Studio Q this year was our documentary unit. It allowed Studio Q to explore a variety of topics and issues while also providing a larger medium for our film students to present their talents and practice their skills. We produced five documentaries this year, the most popular focus on the plight of the 20-something generation. So, backed by popular demand, here is Down a Generation, Life After the Boom.
There are those who say this is the lost generation. They are better educated than any Canada has ever produced, but their prospects are worse than any this age group has faced since the Depression. Generation X, by definition, is overeducated and underemployed. Right? So it's people who, who know about the options that they don't have. I, I don't really like the term Generation X anymore because I think it's been highly overused. I try to avoid using things like Generation X. I think slacker is a good word for us. I like that word. Mm, and I don't really like using slacker. The idea of doing nothing is very, it's kind of cool for people our age. You're so cool. You're so cool. You're so cool. And that's, I think, really important to us. Just the idea of being cool. the 70s, and we add, um, I guess, a sinister, ominous kind of element to it, um, as opposed to the innocence that there was in the 60s. Our generation seems to be obsessed with being different from everyone else. There is no other possibility. What are you going to do in the context of, you know, work that's not necessarily going to be able to, to pay your rent. A university degree is a piece of paper that, you know, will still get you a waitering job. I have an extensive collection of name tags in here now. What am I doing after I graduate from this institution? Admit you to this degree with all its rights. And, and perhaps live the life of a, a gritty earth poet or something. <laughs> or a carpenter. <laughs> Jesus was a carpenter. Part of music now is pretty, in a way, it's, it's quite aggressive. And, and there's no, a lot of, like, there's no holds barred. And it's just, I don't know. I think they should. There's a point where you can say what you want to say through music, and there's a point where, and a lot of times people cross that, that line, and they just say something stupid. Music can always change, you know, there's always another, another medium to work through, there's another album, or there's another video, or there's another band, or there's something else all the time. Songs that are getting a lot of popularity, like that's the loser, you know, I'm a loser, babe, so why don't you tell me? I think that sums up a lot of the anxieties that people feel about what we're going through right now. Perhaps that's another thing that we're sort of about is we're experimenting, you know, uh, the music itself is sort of experimenting, having fun with what it's about, and maybe not being about anything. And I guess that sort of gets back to the idea of apathy, is that sometimes things are not about anything, they're just about nothing at all or something in the sense of nothing, something complex like that. mixed the best things of all the best features of cable all the best features of telephone lines and the best features of internet get mixed up into this ultimate uh, data highway in which everyone uh, theoretically should have access to my bell calling card and my royal bank card i don't have any money in that bank account right now and, and my bank of montreal bank card would they actually service charge me every time i use it and i ended up making i ended up making three withdrawals a week anyway and uh, then MasterCard, which I use entirely too much. Uh... Hey, take it easy. Computer's your friend. Morning. Of course it's over. 
sex isn't bad, and, and it is fun, and if you're careful. Condoms, they're free. I tell myself, yeah, you can get it too. That's right, <laughs> don't forget. AIDS is really big, and it's, it's, it's like they really want us to be afraid of it. I don't think I'm ready to die. I think we've got it good, actually. Uh, there's a lot more stress and things are faster paced, I suppose. Uh, we're not afraid to tell people who we are and we don't really care um, as much as before what people think of us. It's, one of the problems with the Generation X theories is that a lot of the things that the Generation X people claim to make their generation distinctive apply to more people than just themselves. I don't know what Generation X means, but it's, as far as I'm concerned, the best generation so far. So, Mike, are you sort of sad the show's finishing? Yeah, Graham, it's really been a great year, especially with you as an anchor. You are the best I've ever seen. Thanks, Mike, but uh, how about exams? Well, I'm sort of worried, Graham. You know, if we, uh, if we can get past exams, we will graduate and we'll go into that category of what they call Queen's alumni. Well, in October, we asked Ron Tight and Kevin Bryanton, two former studio cures, to come back here and give us some of their insights on what it is to be an alumni. And the result was Ron and Kevin's excellent alumni adventure. Although we were a tad hungover, just a tad, tad, tad hungover, the, the flood of familiar sights, sounds, and faces at Richardson Stadium made this seem almost like a homecoming. Yes, especially since uh, it, it was homecoming. Well, thank you, Ron. Preparing the present-day students for alumni do would be kind of easy. Yeah, seeing as we saw as alumni as ourselves, you know. Yeah, let's get to it. Yep, knuckle down, buckle down. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, first of all, you will have little of them. So when it comes to successes, launch them. And I took commerce and finance and, and graduated in 34, and I've been in, well, actually, I graduated, it's a long story, but I, technically my class is 33, and I've been in real estate 57 years in Toronto. If success isn't in your alumnal crystal ball, Hey, don't worry, you can always find refuge in booze. Ugh, strong stuff. No, you go to the Portsmouth, you have okay. a beer, and then you come here, watch the game. No, you missed that. And then you go back to the Portsmouth, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you go to the party. Simple. That is the life. That's right, Ron. You know, it's sometimes the simpler myths that are often overlooked in our life. Yeah, but don't forget, want those successes. I'm past president of the Toronto Real Estate Board, which has 23,000 members. I'm past president of the Canadian Association, which has 82,000 members. Unfortunately, I'm the oldest living past president. All right, okay, th thank you, Hugh, but past presidentships aside, to become a true member of Club Real, you got to settle down, get married, get yourself a house, and, and procreate. procreate. Procreate, that's it. Uh, that can wait, though. Yeah, yeah, hello. Hello to you, too. And if marriage isn't your thing and the alumni blues are getting you down, do what we do. Yeah. Periodic yogic flying. Hey, not only does it reduce stress, but it also takes a big bite out of the Canadian deficit. And of course, flaunt those successes. The thing is, I think the real estate's the greatest business on earth. I've been in commission since I left Queens. Done very well. I traveled the world. I've been just came back from England. I went over in the Queen Mary and flew back in the Concorde, three hours and 20 minutes. I think commerce is great. I've done very well with it. <laughs> well, you know, Ron, what, Kev? I've come to the conclusion that being an alumni, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Love it, live it, and cherish it. Forever. Hi, this is Joe Byrne for Studio Q Sports with highlights from the 1993-94 athletic season. 
The fall athletic season brought many successes and some failures to the Golden Gales. The Rugby Gales Division I team won their seventh title in eight seasons. The Gales defeated Western 18-15 to take the OU title for 1993. Six conference All-Stars were named, led by three-time winner Nate Lampard. The second division of the Rugby Gales also dominated the fall season, winning their overall title. In soccer action, the women's team placed first in the East Division. In the championships, Queens captured the bronze medal by defeating Western 2-1. Men's soccer won the first OU title since 1975. OU All-Stars for the men's team included Mark LeBron and Brendan Johnson. The defending Vanier Cup champions had a tough 1993 season, losing many veteran players and marked by severe injuries to top All-Stars, including Brad Albert. The football Gales posted two wins and five losses, failing to make the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. Men's golf took the OU AA bronze medal at the championship held at the Blue Springs Golf Club in Acton. OU All-Star Gord Percy finished second in the extra hole playoffs for the individual title honors. Women's rowing captured the OWI AA silver medal. Individual golds went to Ann Butler and Kristen Bridges for lightweight doubles and Kristen Butler for heavyweight singles. The winter sporting season of 1994 was marked by success in team and individual athletics. Queens hosted the OU Wrestling Championships where the Gales finished in seventh place overall. Kent White of the Gales won the bronze and qualified for CIs where he placed in fourth. At the pool, the women's swim team finished fifth at the OW Championships where Heather Armitage won the 50-meter backstroke to qualify for CIs. The team had their best finish in many years. In squash, the women's team won the OW Championship for the second consecutive season while the men finished in fourth place. On the ice, the men's hockey team struggled this season with seven wins, 18 losses, and one tie, which disqualified the Gales from the playoffs. Queens Curling captured the OU AA Championship, where the men posted a 12-2 record, while the women were undefeated all season, capturing the championship for the second time in three years. In basketball action, the women ended the regular season with a 6-6 record and lost 72-59 to the Western Mustangs at the championship. Vicki Wilson was named All-Canadian for her strong play this season. The men's basketball team struggled this season, posting only three wins and nine losses. Dave Smart set a new Queens single game record with 43 points against York in February. Queens hosted the OWI AA figure skating competition this past winter where they placed silver. Gold medals went to Deanna Harada for open solo dance and Lisa Keyworth for senior A singles. That wraps up the 1993 sporting season. That's it for Studio Q Sports. I'm Joe Byrne. Well, that's it for this week's show and for that matter for this year. Forever. Thank you for watching uh, every week, those of you who did. Um, That's our housemates and good friends. My mom. Friends, Thanks a lot, mom. And, and before we go, though, we have uh, we have a giveaway. Yes, we do. One more time. We wouldn't let you down. No. So the question uh, is, uh, tell us, and this is, no one's going to get it exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's just to your it best with. guess, your best yeah. guess. How many episodes we have produced this year for Studio Q? And a uh, big hint is, it's one more than Star Trek. That's Mike's special So we know that our biggest fans ma are made up of Trekkies. <laughs> so, you know, it's just one more than Star think Trek. about that. Okay, and, and if you phone in, you win uh, pizza, right? Is a, that pizza? Right? Yep. a pizza, yeah. Okay, as usual. And, and uh, once again, uh, no one's going to be there to answer the phone, but if you just <laughs> feel like calling, just reaching out. Reach out and touch someone. Phone us at... Uh, What's our number again? I even forget. 545-6699. Five, 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 six, six, yeah. Or, or once again, write us at Room 22, uh, John Deutsch University Center, Kings Queen's, Ontario. Queen's University. K7L3N6. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, um, it. that's it. But before we go, though, we'd like to introduce you to our very, very special crew that have helped us out oh, every, yeah. every single Thursday, Wednesday, whenever we shot the show. Woo. Rain, snow, or shine. Yep. First of all, Drum roll <laughs> on top of Mike Wise's head right here, right now. Mary Ann was on. Mary Ann was on. You saw this her before, actually. She was on before. There she is. What a girl, <laughs> eh? What a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about there me? All right, and uh, and one more. <laughs> and Kevin's behind Kevin the camera. Roller. Just leave the camera, camera there. Just come over. Yeah. There he goes. He's this crossing the, the line. The beauty of the tripod. He's crossing the line. Here he comes. Oh, he's fixed his there hair and everything. Ah. So slick. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, there he is. And then, of course, we've got Mike Wise here. And Mike he goes Wise is saying. here with us. Yes, yes. This is so, the man. This is the brain. They all shy. Thanks to anyone and everyone who watched us for the show. Yeah. So for the last time, <laughs> what's this? Studio Q, what? What's this? What's what? It's a brain. Oh my sucker. God! Did you stop? What's it doing? I don't. Star it's not doing anything on that head. That's for sure. It's certainly not sucking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Okay. For Studio Q, I am Graham Abbey. And I'm Paige Lawrence. And I'm Mary Ann Weisenthal. We will see you next year. Thanks see ya, God. see ya. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, we're one oh big my happy God, family. I can't believe we got two girls in there. We're one big happy family. <laughs> <laughs> sucker. Mm. I hate you. I'm so glad this is all over. You love me. You love me. You love me. Look at you. You got a huge Bring smile. Bring back Sherry Ross. Hi, I'm Shari Ross. And I'm Graham Abbey. And welcome to Studio Q's last show of the year. I'm sorry, that was dumb. <laughs> Go again. I'm Graham Abbey. I sound like Fuzzy the Bear. I'm, I'm Graham, Graham Abbey. Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> I would be more sad if it wasn't under these conditions. I'm more sad that I'm not going to be able to like say anything. And this is the abuse I take constantly. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, once. I, I cannot believe your incompetence. <laughs> Free. Easy chat, <laughs> Okay, can we go, Marianne? God, I'm getting sick of you just constantly okay, interrupting, okay, okay, delaying fair. the process. Okay. <laughs> This is how you put away a microphone. Twist it up around your hand like this. Why are there so many songs about weirdos? What's on the other side? Okay, ready? Okay. I had a lot of fun in residence, actually. Um. Uh, we did. Uh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please put that on camera. Well, this, uh, this I thought was going to be our last episode, but it in fact is not. We have another couple episodes coming after this, so we're going to keep coming again and again. Yeah, Mike just can't seem to get an F.A. He loves it. He, he won't loves give it. up his job. He likes being on top. <laughs> <laughs> likes um, being on top? <laughs> Maybe. I wouldn't know, of course. I can't believe I've been Please keep your distance. I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> Out of my you are uh, such a misfit. Why don't you fit in? <laughs> fit in. You're a ditzy. <laughs> oh, look what she's done now. <laughs> Past, we have had such great expressions as tubular, grody, radical, far from me, with a bag. <laughs> Barf me with a bag was one of the classics. <laughs> we had that about a year ago. Okay, okay, maybe that wasn't. We said that in my house. I don't know about you. Where's my script? <laughs> Bring it to you right now. The fifth annual Studio Q look at campus slang. Coming at ya. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Why do you always do that? Why do you always do some little ending thing? And it's just rotten. Wouldn't curling be an Olympic sport, like of anything, like more than short track skis? Yeah. It's been a beautiful day. But as you can see, the sun is now going down. It's and Ben and I are losing our butts off. So we really are. We're going to head to the QP. But. We've <laughs> <laughs> lost Kaysa now. Something happened to her out west. <laughs> How long have you been like that, Kaysa? Let's go have a uh, beer. What? Last yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Closing it up. Another year. One more show next Thursday. Come on, what the hell? I can get the airtime. <laughs>